I have my blanket. I'm snuggling in. This is going to be our last reading of Indian in the Cupboard. So we're going to finish the story this time. Um, I'm on chapter 16, and it's a shorter chapter. It's called Brothers, and this is our second reading of chapter 16. If you remember, um, Omri is talking to Boone about sending, or to, to Boone and um, Little Bear about sending them back. And Little Bear agrees. Um, Little Bear has a wife now, or he's going to have a wife soon. Um, and he just wants to be Boone's brother, real brother, before he goes. So, um, as soon as Boone is well. <clears throat> Patrick was as sad as Omri was, but he didn't argue against Omri's decision. It's the only way, really, Patrick said. After that, he didn't talk about it anymore. He just tried to be at Omri's house as much as possible. Remember, they're waiting to send um, everyone back until after Boone is feeling better. He couldn't do things with Boone much, of course, even though in a day or two, Boone was sitting up in the longhouse and demanded to talk to his horse, which was brought to the entrance for the purpose and whinnied all, for all sorts of special food and drink. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. I can't be expected to get my strength back if you won't give me some of the hard stuff, he nagged. He even pretended to have a relapse. Omni pinched a nose dropper full of drink from his parents' cupboard and squeezed a large drop down Boone's throat before the Indian girl whose name was Bright Stars. I love that name, Bright Stars. A reference to her shiny eyes, Omri supposed, had succeeded. Oh, so let me read that again without me pausing in the middle of the sentence, sorry. I just love her name as Bright Stars. Okay. Before the Indian girl, whose name was Bright Stars, a reference to her shiny eyes, Omri supposed, was succeeded in conveying the fact that Boone was perfectly all right and that his fainting was fake. Still, after he'd had a drink, Boone seemed much better than Omri and Patrick decided it wouldn't do him any harm. He's used to it after all. And thereafter, Boone got a little bit three times a day and did very well on it. He'll be ready to go back tomorrow, said Omri, on the fourth day when Boone, having had his leg up from Little Bear, managed to ride his horse around the seed box at a steady walk. He'll probably look after him better than we can in his own time. A thought struck him, and he fished out of his pocket the drawing Boone had done. Boone, is, is this your hometown? Sure is! Henry studied it closely under the magnifying glass. Away up the street, he saw a little sign reading, Doctor. Is he a good doctor? About as good as any out west, I reckon. Fished a bullet out of a man's arm, or cut his foot off when he got a snake bike near, as neat as can be. I've seen him bring a pal of mine back from the dead, near enough by putting a hot coal on his belly button. He never operates till a man isn't going to feel the pain, gives him medicine, and he don't change, I don't even know how it is to read this, extra for the liquory neither. I don't know what that means. Omri and Patrick looked at each other. You'd feel they were in good hands with this. Uh, doctor looking after you? Patrick asked, a little worried. Sure would. Anyhow, don't need no saw bones now. I'm healing up just fine. I'm going to be as good as new. Boone did not bear the slightest ill. Ill means like anger or upset towards Little Bear for having shot him. That's the engine's nature, of course. Poor simple creatures. No more helped himself than anyone can from keeping my horse. So... Um, 
back when Boone lived, the world was really different. Um, it's kind of like what we talk about with Dr. Dr. Martin Luther Luther King Jr. Um, people didn't see each other necessarily as equals. And the Native Americans and the Cowboys didn't look at each other as equals. It was also a sad time in our country. Um, of course, we're not there now. We know everyone is is should be treated the same and is is the same right we all are deserving of each other's love and respect all the time um so when boone is saying that he's not saying it necessarily against little bear he's just saying oh well that's what they do they shoot people and that and that's not really true is it right and little bear is struggling but he is a very good person um where am i okay i'm gonna brought a quarter pound of oh no this is i'm off a little bit sorry that night before Amri decided to send them back they decided to hold a brotherhood ceremony I wish we could ask our brothers, said Patrick to Omri at school that day. Suppose we tell them one day about this. They're never going to believe us. <laughs> Sending them back, said Omri slowly. Doesn't mean the magic won't work anymore. I'm going to put the key away somewhere so I won't be tempted. But it will always be there. Patrick looked at him wonderingly. I never thought about that. So there'd be nothing to stop us, months or even years from now, from bringing Boone and Little Bear back again, you know, to visit. I don't know, said Omri. Maybe their time is different from ours. It would be awful if they were old or but he couldn't say the word dead. Both Boone and Little Bear came from such dangerous times. Omri shivered and changed the subject. As for our brothers coming, he said, all I want is for my brothers to keep the rat away and have it in its cage. That rat had been caught by Omri after a long patient wait with cheese in a fishing net and Omri had threatened Gillen with one of the worst fates imaginable if he let it go again. The two boys went to Yaps after school and bought feast foods for the ceremony. Salted nuts and chips and chocolate. And Omri bought a quarter pound of the best meat at the butcher's for tiny little hamburgers. A teaspoonful would have been enough, but the butcher wasn't interested in just selling a teaspoonful. They got bread and biscuits and cake and soda from Omri's mother, and Omri sneaked another dropper full of the hard stuff, without which Boone would certainly not consider it a festive occasion at all. Omri was rather surprised Boone had agreed to be a brother to an Indian at all, but Boone actually seemed rather to like the idea. <clears throat> Can't just get anyone can be a brother to an Indian chief. You know, he said proudly, and he rolled up his sleeves and bright stars carefully swabbed his arm with soap and water. But when he saw Little Bear sharpening his knife on the stone, he became pale. It's gonna hurt, he muttered, but Patrick told him not to be a coward. It's only a little neck. It's nothing at all. Remember, when they're brothers, they said they're going to do something blood brothers. We would never do something like that. Easy for you, said Boone. I ain't so sure this is such a nice idea after all. <laughs> but he cheered up when he saw the campfire being kindled and smelled the meat Bright Stars was cooking on a pointed stick. And when Omri gave him a good swig from the dropper, um, he swaggered up to Little Bear and offered him his arm. Chop away, brother, he said. 
loudly. Little Bear went through a whole routine first, cleaning himself, offering up loud chanting prayers to the spirits, and performing a marvelous stomping dance around the fire. Then he nicked his own hand with the point of his knife, and the blood welled up, and Boone took one long look and burst into tears. <gasps> I don't wanna! <laughs> I changed my mind, he bawled. Almost too late for that. Little Bear seized his arm, and before knew Boone knew what was happening, the deed was done. Bright stars bound their wrists together with a strip of hide torn from the hem of her red dress. Boone looked at it in a bemused way and says, Gee whiz, we done it. I'm part Indian. Well, I guess I can't say nothing against them in the future. Mm, Boone. I like that Boone says that. Then the two brothers, brothers, and it's in quotation marks because they're um, not really brothers, but they're brothers in their minds. The two brothers sat on the ground and Bright Star served them the cooking meat, the cooked meat, and all the rest of the feast. Patrick and Omri offered their congratulations and started in on their own food. They kept the campfire going with tiny bits of broken matchsticks and a bit of coal dust that Omri had collected in the outside bunker, which is when they sprinkled it on the flame, it made a bit of a, a little spit and minute little sparks came out. Remember, minute means very, very small. Looking at it, the three little figures around it, the boy gradually lost their sense of size altogether. I feel like I'm the same as them. Muttered Patrick. Me too, said Omri. I wish we were all the same size and there'd be no problems. Don't be funny. No problems? With two full-grown Indians and a six-foot tall crying cowboy? I mean, if we were small, we could enter their world, sleep in the longhouse, ride the horses... I wouldn't mind eating one of those hamburgers, said Omri. Bright Star was now crouching by the fire, tending to it, singing softly. One of those horses whinnied, and Boone seemed to have dropped off to sleep, leaning on Little Bear's shoulder. Little Bear alone was aware of the boys, watching them. He beckoned to Omri with his free hand. When Omri bent to hear him, he said, Now. Now, you mean to go back? Armory looked at Patrick. And he nodded slowly. When you get into the cupboard, Armory said, you must hold bright stars or she might not go back with you. Woman, go back with little bear. Little bear, hold, not let go. And horse? Little Bear only Iroquois with horse. And remember, the Iroquois are the tribe of Native Americans that Little Bear is. But Boone must go separately. Don't drag him back to your time. People would kill him, even if you are his new brother. Little Bear looked at Boone, asleep at his side. And their joined wrists. Then he took his knife and cut the rope that bound them together. And Patrick gently lifted Boone up. Don't forget his hat. He'll never forgive us if we leave him, if we leave him and we leave that behind. To be safe, they sat Boone on his horse. Cowboys often ride in their sleep. And he didn't stir as Little Bear led him down the ramp, across the table, and up another ramp that already stood against the rim of the cupboard. And Little Bear went back to the seed box. Carefully, he and Bright Stars put out the fire with the earth. <clears throat> Little Bear took the last look at his longhouse. Then he put Bright Stars onto the horse's back and led them after Boom. They stood all together at the bottom of the cupboard. Nobody spoke. Omri had his hand on the door when Patrick suddenly said, I'm going to wake up Boone. I don't care. I've got to say goodbye to him. 
<clears throat> having heard his name, <clears throat> Boom woke up by himself. So it suddenly he nearly fell off his horse <laughs> and had to clench the high pummel of his saddle. And it's that little knob that comes out to hold on to for balance. What you want, kid? He asked Patrick, whose face was really close to him. You're going home, Boone. I, I wanted to say goodbye. Boone stared at him, and then his face slowly crumpled. I can't stand saying goodbye. <laughs> he choked out. His tears began to stream down his face. He pulled a large red grubby handkerchief from his pocket. I just refuse to say it, that's all. I'm only going to burst out crying if I do. And he blew a trumpet blast into his, out of his nose. As he blew his nose. It must have been loud, like a trumpet. Omri and Little Bear were staring at each other. Something else was needed. Some special farewell. It was Little Bear who thought of it. Omri, give hand. Omri put his hand forward. And the horse braced his legs, but Little Bear held him steady. Little Bear took a hold of Omri's little finger. And he drew his knife. And he pricked it with the soft part, and a drop of blood appeared. Then Little Bear pressed his own wrist right up against the place and held it there. Brother, he said, looking at Omri with a fierce black eyes for the very last time. Omri withdrew his hand, and Little Bear jumped onto the back of his horse behind Bright Stars, holding her around the waist so that he, she, and the horse made one unit that could be separated during whatever kind of, not could not be separated during whatever kind of an earthly journey they were going to make together through the unknown regions of time, space, and proportion. <clears throat> time, space, and proportion. Proportion means size. So through the unknown regions, places we don't understand, because of course it's the magic of this book, of time, space, and proportion. Omri, a little bear raised his arm in the Indian salute. Omri put his hand on the door. He nearly couldn't do it. He had to set his teeth. Boone and his horse stood patiently, but the Indian's horse started to prance and slide. He put up his head and gave one challenging neigh. Now! cried Little Bear. Omri drew his breath, closed the door, and turned the key. He and Patrick stood frozen. With the sadness and the strangeness of it, the magic was working at this moment. Both of them silently counted to ten, then very slowly, Omri, whose hand had not left the key, turned it back again and opened the door. There they were, the two plastic groups, forms, outlines, shells of the real, real creatures they had been. Each boy lifted his own and helplessly examined it. The life-giving details in blurred plastic can't show fine beadwork, the perfection of hair and muscle, the folds of hide, the sheen of a horse's coat, or the beauty of a girl's skin. The figures were there, but the people, the personalities, they were gone. Patrick's eyes met Omri's once more. Both were wet. We could bring him back just as quick, Patrick said. No. No, I know they're home now. Omri put his group, the Indian and the girl, and the horse on a shelf nearest his bed where he could see it easily. He laid the beaded belt still real beside it. Patrick slipped the mounted cowboy into his pocket, keeping his hand around it, almost as if to keep it warm. And here they are, as they turned back into plastic. Then Omri took the key and left the room. His mother was in the kitchen, getting everyone a hot drink before bed. He took one look at Omri's face and her hands became still.
What's wrong? Nothing, Mom. I want you to keep this key. I lost it. Luckily, I found it again. You told me it was important. Better you keep it, please. She nearly refused, but Lynn looked at him. And she changed her mind and took the key from him. I'm going to get a chain and wear it, she said, like I always meant to. You won't lose it, will you? She shook her head and suddenly reached for him and hugged his face against hers. He was shaking. He broke away and ran back to his room, where Patrick was still standing with his hand in his pocket, gazing at the cupboard. Come on, I'm going to put all sorts of medicines in it, Omri said loudly. Bottles of pills, stuff Mom's finished with. We'll pretend it's a doctor's drug cupboard, and we can mix lots of things together. His voice petered out. Those were silly games, such as he had played before. He didn't feel the slightest interest in them now. I'd rather go for a walk, said Patrick. But what am I supposed to do with the cupboard? Henri asked desperately. Leave it empty, Patrick said. In case. He didn't say in case what, but he didn't have to. Just to know you could. That was enough. And I want to let you know. That's the end of our story. But um, Lynn Reed Banks didn't just write this one book. That was her first book in the series, The Indian in the Cupboard. She wrote another book called The Return of the Indian and another one called The Secret of the Indian. And actually, I even think there's more than that, um, but at least there's those three. And that would be a good start. Maybe that would be something that you could do with your mom and your dad or someone else to read you the next book in the series by Lynn Reed Banks. It was a great book, wasn't it? Love you guys.